Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And today, with the next configuration, that is, let's say, the parallel input, parallel output. All right, parallel input, parallel output mode of the shift register, right? And in short, we call this a P pole. This is the most commonly used register for storage as well as as a buffer. What is a buffer? So I'm telling you in a minute. Now, how many bits do you want me to do? Well, in this case, I could do seven bits also. There's no problem of time. There's no problem of board. All right. So let's say do the five bit in this case. So five bit register. So for five bits, I require five flip flops. Let's say we have this D4, Q4. Then we have uh, D3, Q3. D2, Q2. D1, Q1. D not Q not. I have place for two more flip flops also, okay, but this is enough. And we know that the clock pulse is provided simultaneously. Oh, this is very long. Negative edge triggered flip flops we're using, right? And this is the clock pulse. And the clear signal, let's say, is also provided. Okay, so this is, let's say, the clear signal. Okay. Now, what do we have? But before telling me, if I'm telling you that you know about the D flip flop in a great detail, but let me write over here as in the previous video also mentioned. But I have not revised it in the registers part. But so whenever the value of the clock is 1. Right. So the next state that is QN plus 1 is equal to 0. If D is 0. Right. And QN plus 1 is equal to 1 if D is equal to 1. Which means whatever be the value at the input. The same thing appears at the output. In the D flip flop, if and only if the clock is 1, alright? If the clock is 0, the QN plus 1 is the previous state, alright? D is equal to, don't care, let's say. If the previous, at this state, whatever be the value of D, if either it's 1, if either it's 0, the output, the present output will be equal to the previous output if the clock is equal to 0. Now to this circuit back, the parallel input, parallel output. So parallel inputs mean we are providing everything at the same time. This is in our control. Each and every input is available to us, accessible to us, I should say. We access, we can access each and every input. And similarly, each and every output is also accessible to us. All right, this is this sort of a circuit that we can input all the bits at the single time and similarly we can retrieve all the bits at the same time. All right, we can input all bits at the same time and we can also retrieve or extract all the bits retrieve all the bits at the same time let's say a 5 bit number I want to store for example let's say I want to store a 5 bit number 10101 this is the 5 bit number so all the inputs are available to me so D4 I input, this is the most significant bit, right? And this one is the least significant bit. So I enter 1 over here, 0 over here, 
this one over here, this zero over here, and the least significant bit one is to the final flip flop. So they've all been entered. Now, how to extract it? So the D flip flop, whatever be the input, is equal to the output, and I've made the clock equal to one. The clear signal is made one. So what do you have? I directly have the output equal to one, zero, one, zero, one. Have a look. So directly, without any further clock pulse, I have given the inputs, all the inputs directly. Whatever be the number of bits, five bits in this example, it could be six, it could be seven, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen. Whatever it is, the it only takes a single clock pulse to be fitted into the register, to be loaded into the register, to be saved into the register. And at the same time, as soon as it's loaded into the register, you can extract it at the very same time. So this is the most important, the most simple, and the mostly used configuration. Requires only one pulse. Requires only one clock pulse to save as well as to extract the data. Whatever be the number of flip flops, whatever be the values. Okay, let's say if I if I draw the 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 circuit diagram so let's say this is the first falling gauge this is the second and so on let's say this is the clock pulse right now for the outputs what do i have for the input sorry so d4 is the first input let's say initially was zero i want to make it high so it is preferable to make it high just before the negative falling gauge has arrived all right or let's say with the falling gauge i make it so so D4 is high, then you have D3 is low, so it will stay low, right? D2 is high, D1 is low, and D0 is high again. So have a look, this is 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and this has been stored. And similarly, on this value, this is the input values, right? So I told you to make the input high just before the falling edge arrives, right? And for the output, the output occurs when the falling edge exactly arrives. So the output would be the same. This is the output. This is for Q3. This is for Q2. This is for Q1. This is for Q0. The same, all right. This is Q4, Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0. So that's about it, okay? You just enter it at the same time. It's available to you exactly at the same time. And I told you that this is a storage register. This is a register most widely used for storage because it requires less number of clock pulses and it's more simple to understand as well. Also, it is used as a buffer. Now, what is a buffer? This buffer mainly refers to a time delay. Time delay. This is represented by a symbol like this. Well, this ain't a not gate because we don't have a bubble over here. So, over here, whatever do you have at the input, the same thing is there at the output. Input is equal to output. So why, what is the need of this input and input is equal to output? So this, the need is time delay. If you want to have some time delay, you want to waste some time in between two particular uh, experiments or two particular operations. So you need to, st you wait, wait a little. And this buffer actually provides that waiting circuitry. This buffer, you, you, have, you most probably would have read in your microprocessor scores. That is there, it is used a lot time delay in this buffer. We will study them together, inshallah, when the proper time comes. When we are done with this, whenever the microprocessor's turn comes, we'll be studying them. So that's all for today. 
See you in the next lecture with the last configuration that is the parallel input serial output mode. Till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.